Hello, everyone. My name is Ruth Lanius, and I work at the University of Western Ontario in London, Ontario, Canada. A warm welcome to everyone participating from Ukraine. It's a pleasure to be here today. And I'd like to uh, spend the next few minutes talking about a new treatment modality called deep brain reorienting. This uh, technique was developed by Frank Corrigan. And I think it's a very exciting novel method to target post-traumatic stress, but especially shock related to post-traumatic stress. And deep brain reorienting was really developed to target the root of the trauma response, which is deep within the brain, in the survival brain or the reptilian brain. And the critical part of this brain is that it reacts without thinking. And that's where the trauma response really originates. So deep brain reorienting is a sequenced approach to uh, deal with triggers or traumatic memories. And the focus of DBR is really on the shock response, which Frank Corrigan has hypothesized to be uh, really important in targeting because this shock response, if not targeted, will often prevent the trauma from being processed fully. And so when you're working with deep brain reorienting and when you're processing trauma, you first orient the person to the present, and then you get the person to bring up a trigger of the trauma. This can be a trigger they experienced during the last couple of weeks, or you can also work directly with a memory. We're finding that working with triggers is highly effective and is not as difficult for people, and so they can tolerate the processing much better. We then get individuals to bring up a trigger, for example, you know, going to the grocery store and somebody looking at them in an angry fashion, which caused anger and distress. They bring up this trigger and then we focus on the orienting response. And whenever you orient to something internally or externally, you turn your head and neck towards or away from the stressor. And this results in a head and neck tension. We use this head and neck tension to anchor the individual for the entire session. So once they've brought up a trigger, when they have this orienting response, we get them to identify the head and neck tension, which serves as an anchor throughout the session so they can stay embodied and process the trauma fully. Then we focus on processing shock. Again, while being anchored in the orienting tension and shock is often associated with tension behind the eyes, in the shoulders from this response and a hollowness in the body. And I can imagine if you're living in Ukraine right now, you know very well what shock is with the constant bombings you're exposed to. We allow the person to sit with the tension related to the shock and usually it increases and it then decreases. And then we process the visceral sensations associated with any emotional responses that come up. And again, we just invite the person to sit with that. And towards the end of the session, what usually happens is that individuals reach new perspectives. So they feel differently about themselves and the world. And often it really allows them to drop back into their body and re-inhabit their body. And they no longer need to avoid all the necessary and torturous sensations in the body related to the traumatic memory because that has been soothed. And so now they can now re-inhabit their body. So again, I'm gonna review what we just talked about. We start with the orienting response when a person brings up a trigger or a memory, and that involves 
turning of the head either towards the trigger or away from the trigger, as you can see in the dog. And this involves brain regions very deep within the brain, the reptilian brain or the survival brain. And again, these brain regions come online without us thinking about them. They're automatic. It's reacting without thinking. And that at the time of the trauma has really helped us to survive. So that's the first response we work with. We work with that tension and we use that tension as an anchor throughout the session to help the person stay embodied. We then work with the shock response and you can see this shock response in this man, right? He's, he's shocked and often that's associated with tension behind the eyes, in the shoulder or hollowness throughout your body. And again, I'm sure many of you can identify with this, especially during times of war. But shock is also very important in early life trauma. And Frank Corrigan and Christy Sands refer this to attachment shock. So when you're turning towards your caregiver, you need support and your caregiver may respond with anger or rage. That can also lead to a shock response. And then the third part we work with is this raw emotion that sits in your body. And again, we help the individual process that. And again, we feel that this is located deep within the brain stem, the periaqueductal gray, an area that reacts without thinking. So you have no control over that. So again, just to review, we start with the orienting tension in the head and neck, then we work with the shock, and then we work with the raw emotion. Our group in collaboration with Frank Corrigan has recently done a randomized controlled trial of deep brain reorienting using eight sessions of online DBR treatment and we're very impressed with our interim findings. The study is ongoing, and we assess people both clinically as well as with brain imaging to see how their brain is changing. I just want to share our findings with you. So we're comparing deep brain reorienting to a waitlist response. And as you can see here, this is the waitlist response. And this is the deep brain reorienting response. People with deep brain reorienting do very well. We have a strong effect size and we have minimal dropouts. In the interim study, only 4% dropped out. So very minimal dropouts. And we think that this is related to the fact that we're using the triggers very gently, that we don't go to the deepest memory at first, but that we introduce people to DPR gently and we slowly work towards some of the most dense and deepest memories of the client. And as I said previously, a lot of our patients are just able to drop into their body because the memories no longer are seated in the body is what they tell us after DBR. And I want to end this talk with one of, the, one of a quote from one of our patients. And this is what she said. It's like you're allowing me to experience my painful memories in a safe space. And it kind of releases from my body. And afterwards, I'm more able to look at it from a distance instead of it being in my body. So thank you very much. And I wish you all the best. Take care.